Hi, my friends. Brian King here. Let me ask you a question. Tell me what you think about the following statements. I am dyslexic. I am autistic. I'm a loser. I'm Italian. I am married. Well, honestly, I wholeheartedly disagree with the first three of those statements. Because what they do is they declare that this term, this label, can describe who you are as a person. That I am dyslexic is who I am, as opposed to I am Brian King. It also says something about who I am. But in terms of thinking of yourself in terms of I am dyslexic, I am autistic, I am a loser, nothing could be further from the truth. And when you think about all five of those statements, you know, including the ones I am Italian, I am married, what it does when you use terms like that is you are saying that this headline, this term, says the most important things about me. And you walk around as though this is the headline of your being, and this is what you need to lead with. Let me give you an example. I was having a conversation with a client yesterday, a gentleman that has Asperger's. And one difficulty he's had over the years is he's made a habit of defending his missteps by saying, oh, well, I have Asperger's, and slow, slams the door on any kind of further discussion and ignore the dogs. And what he's essentially doing is he's eliminating any possible teachable moments. So when he explained this to me, I asked him this question. Are you telling me that you can't learn and grow? And he said, well, no, it's not that, but it is hard. And I have no idea what they're looking at. He said, no, but it's hard to grow. So I said, well, great, because we can work with hard. Working with can't is more difficult. And as you know, if you know me well, I have multiple disabilities. And not one of them tells you who I am as a person. If you think that you know me because I say, well, I have ADHD or I have MS, and you start telling your story about what you've read, what you know, and you project that on me, well, that's called stereotyping. You know, you've just decided who I am, what my difficulties are, what my life looks like, before you even had a chance to know me. And now it's on me to try and show you who I am after you've made all these decisions. And that's hard to do because one thing you know about the ego, it likes to be right. It likes to be certain about things. So when you, you think you've got it all figured out, it's hard for me to prove otherwise. And one place this happens a lot is in the classroom. When you hear teachers say, oh, I've worked with these autistic kids for years, I know what to expect. I wanna shake a person really hard when I hear that and say, don't you dare Decide who my child is before you've gotten to know him or her. So please keep that in mind. Let me give you another example. I was at a networking event many, many years ago. And we're all shaking hands and getting to know each other. And one guy comes up to me, we're talking, and I tell him, you know, hey, I work with families that have Asperger's and so on. And he says to me, do you consider yourself an expert? I said, no, honestly, I consider myself a human being. And that's the honest truth. And that's the answer that I give to this day. I consider myself human. And that's really my highest recommendation to anybody that struggles with what to do with a diagnosis they've been given, whether it's bipolar, depression, Asperger's, ADHD. Try to reconcile that with who you think you are. Well, really, you can see it as a detail. Who I am essentially is a human being. How I describe that to you in terms of the facts, I got certain color hair, I happen to be married, I have this many children, 
as opposed to I am a father of three. What happens when your kids move out and don't need you anymore? Now who are you? See, things like that, when they change, can create this identity crisis. But if you're a human being, not only does that encompass everything in your life, but being a human being doesn't change. It's a constant, not only for you, but everybody else that you may come in contact with. Every other human being. So one thing that we do that's very unfortunate, that we use to cut ourselves off from other human beings, is we get stuck in this label as our identity. I'm an Aspie. I'm a member of the autism community. And then we run around doing the one thing we accuse other people of doing. We other the typical folks, if there is such a thing. And we disqualify them from being in our lives. You know, oh, you don't have autism. You couldn't understand me. Or you don't have kids with special needs. You don't know what it's like. And you've decided this person can't relate to you, and this person's not your time. What a load of bullshit. You have just alienated, you have created an environment for loneliness, and it's on you. So when you think you're alone, nobody gets you, it's this internal dialogue that you use wow. to disqualify wow. people that has left you feeling wow. isolated. Because the reality is, you're a human being, they're a human being. You have a heck of a lot more in common with these people than you have differences. But you're coming from a point of reference that's very limited because you are too concerned with this label. So let me propose a solution to this. What is starting now? You live from the answers to these questions and listen closely. First question is, as a human being, and nothing more. What do I have in common with everyone else? We all suffer. We all have some insecurities. We all want to be happy. We all want to feel like we matter. The list is potentially endless. Think about that and come up with some real solid answers. Then move to the second question. Of the experiences we all share, how would I begin a friendly conversation about one of them? Somebody else wants to matter. How do you help them feel like they matter? Give them some attention. Listen to them talk about their day. Compliment them on something they did or something they chose to wear. Third question. What could I say to another human being to help them be seen by me as someone who gets it? Listen to somebody when they're having a difficult time and say, man, I've been there. I know what it's like. I understand. Find some way to connect, to really hear them, to see them. Think about these questions and let me know what kind of answers you come up with. And you know, the, the client I mentioned a little bit ago with the Asperger's, one thing that we've been able to accomplish because I proposed this question to him. What do you think about the idea that there's more to you than having Asperger's? That you are a human being that is capable of learning and growing. And if you accept those opportunities to stretch, you'll find that you have more capacity than you ever allowed yourself when you hid behind the can't. Well, this gentleman, who has only thought he was capable of working within a very narrow field of endeavor, is now considering an opportunity to pursue work in a field that requires tremendous emotional intelligence. Something that when he thought about it, he realized that he had a greater capacity for it than he's allowed himself because he's hid behind the label. Now, is this true for everybody with Asperger's? Probably not. But each individual, including you, owes it to yourself to question what you've decided are your limitations if you identify so closely to a label. So think about these questions again. Very, very important. 
Oh, and that gentleman with Asperger's I was talking about again. This conversation I had with him took place in one of my group coaching calls. And these are the kind of conversations we have every week. It's very exciting. If this is something you want to explore more, and I highly recommend you do, check out my page for my program at resiliencewarriors.solutions. In fact, the link is up in the description for this video. So have a look. And if this has been helpful to you in some way, please share it with other people, because I have no doubt that there are folks in your life that can benefit from this message. Folks with disabilities, folks that are married to or raising people with disabilities need to hear this message because it can be very easy to be afraid and hold somebody back because you want them to be safe but you don't want them to be hurt. But you know what hurts them even more? Sending them out into the world unprepared. So this has been Brian. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I'm so grateful for you letting me share my mission. Have an awesome time, and we'll be talking again soon.